looking really nice. Unchain my heart, baby, and set Ooh, me free. Right. Uh-oh. Mike's mm -hmm. loving your voice. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> Let's wake up. <laughs> yeah, that means I haven't had anything. <laughs> no water, no anything. I'm going to take some juice. Yeah. in the harbor of Cap Haitian on the north coast of Haiti between Cuba and Puerto Rico where the flagship of Christopher Columbus was wrecked in 1492. At that time the land was inhabited by a friendly tribe of Indians but they soon gave way to the Spaniards who in turn surrendered to the French so that at the present time Haiti is the only Latin American Republic in which French is the official language. Today is market day and along the roads leading to town, there is a constant procession of colored folk, all traveling with one purpose, to buy, sell, or exchange something in the marketplace. During the Spanish and French rule, thousands of slaves were brought to this island from Africa. And later, thanks to the liberty, equality, and fraternity platform of the French Revolution, many of these slaves were set free and out of their ranks came the leaders of revolutions that ultimately freed all the slaves in Haiti. And the greatest of these was His Black Majesty, King Henry Christophe, of whom we shall hear more later. The marketplace at Cap Haitian is a rendezvous for merchants and customers alike. Prices here are very reasonable. Avocados, for example, sell for a cent apiece. Green peas, a pound for a penny. And bananas are practically given away. The town of Cap Haitian was formerly the capital of the Republic, and during the reign of King Christophe, it reached the height of its glory, but today it is only the ghost of what it used to be. Although a vast majority of Haiti's three million inhabitants are colored people, there are a number of mulattoes or mixed bloods, and a smaller number of pure whites. Most of the mulattoes are French in language and education. And although they may have absorbed from their Negro ancestors much of their African mysticism and superstition, they have also inherited many admirable qualities of the early French settlers. The Haitian army now consists of about 200 officers and 3,000 men, all under the command of the President of the Republic. Many of these men are descended from the soldiers of King Christophe, of whom sensational stories have been told, such as the one about the regiment that marched off a 300-foot precipice because Christophe did not command them to stop. And this was done, it is said, for the benefit of a courier from the court of Napoleon who had questioned the loyalty and obedience of Christophe's soldiers. Among the notables of the French court who formerly resided in Haiti was Pauline Bonaparte, the sister of Napoleon, and this is the site upon which her sumptuous residence once stood. And now we behold the famous Palace of Saint Souci, built during the colorful reign of His Black Majesty, Henry Christophe, King of Haiti, and one of the most remarkable men ever produced by the colored race. Born a slave about 1765, he became a leader in the Haitian slave uprising was made president of Haiti in 1807 and was crowned king five years later. The valley in which this palace is situated was paved with marble tiles brought from France as ballast in the king's coffee ships. Costly works of art and French mirrors line the walls of the corridors and the throne room shone with a magnificence of gold and silver plate that fairly dazzled all beholders. King Christophe had many fine palaces in Haiti, but Saint Souci is the one where he held his court and where his queen and royal family resided. The dome church which stands near the palace was the royal chapel. Although Christophe himself was hardly a religious man, he wisely concluded that rule without religion would be too difficult. 
So he made the Roman Catholic faith the official state religion, but with complete toleration of all other creeds. Not far from here, like a medieval fortress upon a mountain peak, stands the great citadel of King Christoph, one of the architectural wonders of the world and a sinister reminder of the black Napoleon's power. The building of the pyramids of Egypt was nothing compared with the miraculous construction of this fortress upon a perpendicular mountain peak over 300 feet in height and more than a half a mile above sea level. Picture if you can an army of black workmen under the yoke of a black despot lugging and hauling a half million tons of building material up the mountain from the sea with nothing but the brawn of their sweating bodies to aid them. The finished job on level ground would have been a great architectural achievement, but upon a peak mountain rising from a tropical jungle, verily it matches, if it does not excel, the building of the Egyptian pyramids. Henry Christoph's mighty citadel now serves as an attraction for tourists who have only recently discovered it. Here there were garrison quarters for 10,000 soldiers and a royal suite for Henry and his queen. It is said there is a secret underground tunnel that leads from the citadel to Saint Souci, and that there is buried somewhere beneath its fortress a million and a half pounds of sterling. Only the king and his mulatto engineer knew the hiding places of the citadel, and as soon as it was completed, it is alleged that Christoph deliberately pushed the engineer over the edge of this parapet. Three hundred and sixty-five cannon, one for each day in the year, were hauled up to the citadel to be fired upon an enemy that never came. Christoph himself directed the only shot that was ever fired from here, and that destroyed an unfortunate Negro who was sleeping under a tree in the valley below when he was supposed to be working, confirming the fact, as it were, that Christoph was allergic to laziness in his people. In 1820, after 14 years of despotic rule, Henry Christoph was stricken with paralysis. His subjects, demanding his abdication, revolted against him, and realizing that his reign was over, he shot himself with a golden bullet. Deserted by his own people, his widow and two daughters, with the help of one loyal friend, dragged his huge body from the palace up the mountainside to this spot and threw it into a pile of wet lime so that his enemies could not desecrate it. And so, here lie the mortal remains of his black majesty, Henry Christoph, the mightiest monarch of the Negro race. Although he was powerful and clever, he was as despotic as the pharaohs who built pyramids. And now that all the fanfare that attended his wake up. <laughs> yeah, it means I haven't had anything. <laughs> no water, no anything. I'm gonna take some juice. Yeah. Hello, my name is Kazemi Balagoon and welcome to the Breck Forum. The Breck Forum is a 35-year-old radical left cultural center located in the heart of the West Village. We have the pleasure today of welcoming the Haiti Guadalupe tour. Hi, my name is Jadimar Bonilla. I'm a professor at the University of Virginia, a cultural anthropologist. I specialize in Caribbean studies and I'm traveling with the, uh, our friends here from Guadalupe in Haiti. I'll be serving as interpreter. Je suis le secrétaire général de la centrale autonome de Guadalupe ici. Je suis Fignolé Sancier, il est de Haïti, et il est le secrétaire général de la Confédération uh, confederation of Haitian workers. Mon nom est Eddie Domota. Je suis le spokesperson de LKP et aussi le général secrétaire de l'Union uh, of Guadeloupéens Workers en Guadeloupe. Raymond Gamma, historien, docteur en histoire. À la retraite, professeur. Raymond Gamma is a retired history professor from Guadeloupe. And good morning and welcome to Father Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm Cole Clark, standing in for Paula Gloria. And we're going to go down the rabbit hole this morning, way down the rabbit hole, looking at issues of Guadeloupe and Haiti. Welcome aboard. Guadeloupe and Haiti. Two islands in the Caribbean Sea. We have very little about them, but this year uh, the world was shocked and perhaps a bit amazed and bewildered trying to figure out why hundreds of thousands of people were out in France, 
industry going to strike around the issues of the present economy. What was interesting is that they were out in the street because down in the little island called Guadalupe, there was a major strike, a very interesting strike, in that the workers were joined by the people of the island and they closed everything on the island. The shops, the supermarket, everything was closed along with the docks as the people of Guadalupe struggled to demand France 146 concessions for basic rights of workers and just plain old citizens' rights. Haiti has been with us in the news now for many, many years. We generally think of Haiti as the boat people. We don't think of Haiti as the great republic which received its independence in the early 1800s. We don't think of, of Haiti as the second republic in the Western world. And we certainly don't remember that Haiti is the first nation, republic in the world to grant total freedom to all of its citizens in the midst of a sea of slavery, American slavery, a slavery in South and Central America, slavery in Canada, and slavery in the Caribbean. Haiti has been suffering from that very moment. And so this morning we want to really go down the rabbit hole with Elie de Moto, who has been the spokesperson for of the Guadalupe movement, down the rabbit hole with Bignole St. Cyr, who represents the radical unions of Haiti. Uh, and I did say the radical unions of the revolutionary spirit, the spirit of Bookman, the spirit of Desiline, the spirit of the Founding Fathers. So uh, welcome. And we are going to start this morning by asking Ellie DeMoto to, to give us a little bit of background on Guadalupe, its history, its economy, and why, Ellie, were you struggling with France? Ellie, est-ce que tu peux nous donner un petit fond euh, historique et nous expliquer euh, ce qui c'est la Guadeloupe et pourquoi vous êtes euh, en train de se battre avec la France? Okay, la Guadeloupe, c'est une île des Caraïbes qui se trouve à 8000 km de la France. Guadeloupe is a Caribbean island which is 8000 km away from France. En fait, c'est une colonie de la France. In fact, it's a French colony. Car ce sont les mêmes règles, les mêmes lois de la République française qui s'appliquent dans la, en Guadeloupe. Because it is the same laws and, and, and uh, regulations that are French that are applied in Guadeloupe. L'esclavage a été aboli en 1848. Slavery was abolished in 1848. Mais on peut dire que 200 ans après, ce sont les mêmes rapports d'exploitation qui existent. But 200 years later, it's easy to see that it's the same relationships of exploitation that continue to persist on the island. En fait, les temps ont changé, mais la société elle-même n'a pas évolué. On retrouve les mêmes à la tête des grandes entreprises, les mêmes personnes qui étaient à la tête des grandes plantations esclavagistes. The state has changed, but the relationships of the society have not changed. One finds at the head of all the major commerce and industry the descendants of those who were the heads of the plantations. And well, hold on just a minute. Are you telling me that the same people who were the slave masters, that their children now own most of the economy? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, because in fact in 1848, at the time of abolition, slaveholders received reparations for each slave that they lost. Wait, 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 wait. Attends. The slaveholder was paid for losing the people that they oppressed and enslaved? This is, they, were, they were paid and, and they were well paid because at the time there was a crisis in the sugar industry and so they received a lot of uh, sub, uh, subsidies from the French state. So the people continued to work in fact. And don't get it, the, the liberated slaves did not receive any compensation. They were just asked to suddenly start working as salaried workers, et, supposed salaried workers. Et ceux qui Those who refused to work were perse persecuted and even uh, they even faced uh, death penalty charges. Oh, let me get this straight, because in America we had peonage following the end of slavery. Peonage meaning that you, you violated a contract uh, you didn't show for work, uh, then you were in fact jailed for, uh, for, 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 to work for your former master. Mm -hmm. now, so what I'm hearing is that 
after the enslavement, very similar to the United States of America, the African, and we're talking about mostly Africans, are, are we? Those, yes, Africans. The African now not only has to pay the French, serve the French, by working to pay off this debt for having been owned by the French. Donc, uh, les Africains, ils... But the African now must take care of his own person, must provide his own food, the essentials that were provided during the enslavement. Now you must provide for yourself as well as take care of your former <coughs> master. Mais... I'm in here because I think you know, sitting on my right is Pignole Saint, uh, Saint Cyr from Haiti. And, um, you know, Pink Pignole, well, Haiti is just the opposite of this, is it? In the contrary to that which our comrade Elia said. Haiti and la Guadeloupe have a history commune. Haiti and Guadeloupe have a common history. Mais ça existe sous différentes formes. But it existed in different ways, in different forms. Uh, la Guadeloupe, c'est un pays, c'est une île colonisée. Guadeloupe is a co was a colonized island. Nous c'est un pays qui s'est dit d'être indépendant. We are a so-called independent country. Toujours occupé par la grande puissance. But is, we're still occupied by the great powers. Et aujourd'hui, nous avons 15 dans l'histoire récente d'Haïti, nous avons 15 ans affilés de l'occupation en Haïti. Uh, we have been under occupation now for 15 years in Haiti. The most recent occupation was from February 9th, 2004. Objective of that occupation but um, not allow the Haitian people to celebrate their independence. And the Western countries see Haiti as a simple backyard to their own country. <coughs> that is the situation in Haiti. But I want to come back to Haiti at some point and, and talk about why it is so important for the Western countries to occupy <coughs> Haiti. Because I heard that uh, Haiti also had to pay reparations to France. They pay, yeah. Yes, they made us pay to, in order to recognize our independence. And the, the ousting of President Aristide was related to the fact that Aristide had asked for a reimbursement of those indemnities paid to the French state. In order to not pay that money, the French government said that it was necessary to remove Aristide from power. The independent trade unions in Haiti and other associations have been working for a long time in order to eliminate that debt and to recognize that fact for, for a long time. So that long time is since the 1840s, is it not true? That it's Haiti in the 1840s was forced, was forced to begin to pay reparations to France, Professor? The question of the Haitian debt that do, do, do. It goes back to the beginning of the 19th century, uh, after the defeat of the Napole Napoleonic forces. La... Wait a minute, Haiti defeated Napoleon. Eh bien, Napoleon. Yeah. Napoleon. Oui, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Les forces de Dessalines, yes, lui par Leclerc, Rochambeau. In, in, in 1803, Dessalines' forces uh, beat the uh, French troops, end of the year uh, 1803. So, so, so Haiti has to pay for having defeated Napoleon? Don't you forget Napoleon it, Bonaparte who was destroying Europe? Yes, of, if, of course, in, in the name of the European countries. But the, the question is, is tied also to the sugar lobby coming from the Caribbean, from... Uh, absolutely the, they wanted absolutely to recuperate the uh, wealth that they lost as a result of the Haitian Revolution. Um, so, what I'm hearing here as we struggle down here in this rabbit hole is that we have two separate nations, one a colony of France, still owned by France in the 21st century, uh, and we have the, the other that previously was owned by France, and that they are suffering similar conditions even these many years later. One received its independence in the early 1800s from 1804. The other is supposedly freed from slavery in 1848. And today we are still discussing, if not the same, very similar issues to those of the struggles of 1770, uh, 1771 beginning, I believe, in 
Guadeloupe, and I hope the professor will say a few words about that, mm -hmm. and 1791, beginning in Haiti. Donc, Alors, uh, deux mots très rapidement. Just uh, very quickly uh, to, to comment on this history. Uh, de the, all, the ensemble of three colonies, uh, French Alain. colonies in the Caribbean, Guadeloupe, Martinique, and uh, Saint-Domingue, which became Haiti and the Dominican Republic. At the end of the 18th century, produit. was, was uh, pr producing three-fourths Three-fourths of the international commerce of 75% yeah. of, the, of the economic production of the French. Well, let, let, me, let me make it clear for the world that the wealthiest colony in the Western world coming into the 19th century when Haiti received this independence, the wealthiest colony in the Western world was in fact Haiti. And I think what I'm hearing is that Haiti was connected at that time to Guadeloupe and to Martinique. So, uh, yes, so, and, and particularly between 1794 and 1802. Oh, the prize that everybody wanted was being upset then when Guadeloupe, I understand, and not Haiti, led out the first revolution. Is that correct? Don't I know that it began in Haiti ah. in 17... Uh, in the, in, the, in the month of August, uh, 1794. From there, the revolts were transmitted to Grenada and Guadeloupe and other parts of the Caribbean. In 1794, Guadeloupe experienced the first abolition of slavery carried out by the French uh, Assembly. Don't give me. So there, at, at that time, there were two islands in the Caribbean that were did not have slavery, which was Haiti and Guadeloupe. They were the only two places in the Caribbean where there wasn't slavery at that time. Donc, quand, there was an incredible amount of exchange between these two islands. Et des autres îles de la Caraïbe affluaient également des Noirs vers les lieux où il n'y avait plus d'esclavage, Guadeloupe et Saint-Domingue. Many people came from other parts of the Caribbean to these islands because they were the only places where there, weren't, there wasn't slavery <coughs> at the time. Et ce sont ces conditions qui vont créer la révolution aussi bien en Guadeloupe qu'à qu Saint-Domingue. And it is those conditions that led to the revolution, both in Guadeloupe and in Haiti. Et c'est là que ça commence en Guadeloupe. It's there that, uh, that the, the, the rebellion starts in Guadeloupe. En effet. In fact. En 1801. In 1801. Ah, très précisément le 21 octobre. Ça c'est très important pour les Guadeloupéens. In fact, the, to be more precise, it's on October 21st. <coughs> 1801. Des officiers de couleur. The officers, um, black officers in the army. Se révoltent, se rebellent. Rebelled. Et emprisonnent le représentant de la France. And they jailed the representative of the French state in Guadeloupe. Ils nomment un gouvernement provisoire. They declared a provisional government. Constitué de deux blancs, un mulâtre et un cadre, un noir d'origine martiniquaise. Wait, wait, wait. I, the, the, my audience needs to hear this. There is a revolt in the early 1800s in Guadeloupe where black officers, black members of the military, blacks in uniform. Il dit, attends, 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 il faut absolument que mon, mon public entende bien ça. Est-ce que tu veux me dire que dans, dans, dans à cette époque, il y a une rébellion où il y avait des officiers noirs, des hommes noirs avec euh, euh, l'uniforme, euh, la, la tenue euh, de la Absolument, absolument. Ah, mm. oh, this, this, this is exciting, because it's at this hour that blacks in the United States are not only enslaved, America is preparing to... In Washington, about in 1810, we're not even allowed to carry mail. We are beginning to establish the government in 1801. This is a very exciting yes, period of history. That's not just blacks. That's oh. all of us. Oh, and I know, but I got to get these blacks first because they're still in chains, <laughs> rattling. And you're right, Paula. And she's on the camera. Everybody, Paula's on the camera, and she's disturbing this rattling down here in this rabbit hole because we're in this rabbit hole now because we got lots of questions to answer, uh, to, 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 to query here. And try to get some in the next show, we're going to come up with solutions. We catch up oh, yes, we, we're going to have those solutions, Paula. You and I are going to leave the, we're going to leave the revolution in the rabbit hole. The Noirs, they didn't even work in the post, so how is it possible that they could be officers? But there is no slavery. 
He said, you have to remember there was a time when there was no slavery in Guadeloupe for a short period of time. So these were these were French citizens. These were not slaves. Et les Français ont été libérés en 1789. Le représentant de la Convention envoyé en Guadeloupe avec l'abolition de l'esclavage offrit à tous ceux qui étaient capables d'emmener les hommes dans la lutte contre l'Angleterre qui occupait la Guadeloupe They offered to anyone who would enlist in the in the war against the British invasion. Eh bien, des galons. Uh, si tu emmènes 10 hommes, tes sergents. Si tu emmènes 40, tes capitaines, etc. You would get a rank in the army if you brought people to enlist. So if you brought uh, 10 people, you would become a sergeant. If you brought more, you would become a corporal in, in, in the army. Ça a commencé comme oh, ça. Wow. That's oh, how my that buzz tail is just rising up. What? On earth has the British to do with this? Oh, oh, mais qu'est-ce qu que les Anglais ont uh, dans <coughs> cette histoire? Ah ben parce que les Anglais avaient occupé la Guadeloupe avec l'aide des colons français qui étaient pro-anglais contre la Révolution française. Because the British had occupied Guadeloupean territory with the aid of uh, uh, colonial planters who supported the British invasion against the French. So the British were trying to take over these very wealthy colonies that belong to France. Dans les Anglais, ils, ils essayaient de prendre ces colonies très riches de la France. Absolument, ils ont occupé la Martinique qui n'a pas connu l'abolition de l'esclavage. Absolutely, they, had, they occupied Martinique during that time, which is why in Martinique there was not the abolition, the first abolition Et of slavery. Et les Français non plus. And the French were only able to take back avec l'aide des Noirs with the help of the black forces mm -hmm, in, in the French army. Et voilà pourquoi la Guadeloupe s'est trouvée libre de l'esclavage avec des officiers, des capitaines d'origine de Guadeloupe. Alors, Guadeloupe, who was who was called La Crosse, he's a, he arrived in Guadeloupe mm -hmm. representing Napoleon and tries to reimpose slavery after they had been there had been no slavery for a, a, a significant amount of years. These black officers uh, confronted him. You're down here in the rabbit hole. And we're real clear that the money is going to the banks, the money is going to the tanks, the <laughs> money is going to everything but human needs. People around the world need to be free. Haiti needs to get the UN out. Haiti needs the money placed into Haiti's economy. Guadeloupe needs France to honor its demands to do the things it said it would do. Ah, the rabbit is jumping. Paula will be back. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you very much, Dr. Vanilla, for being the boy's son. That we all needed to hear. Whoa. 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 Whoa.